Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially halfway through the playoffs, and it is time for another preview. We will be taking a look at the Eastern Conference this time as the New York Rangers will be taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning in the 2022 Eastern Conference Finals. Now, this is one team that maybe you expected them to be here. Maybe you know they won back-to-back -back cups. Maybe you would expect them to make the Conference Finals again. And then you have a team that, through some luck and a lot of good defense... They're here. We'll start off with the Lightning. They beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in seven games in the first round. They beat the Florida Panthers in four games in the second round. A very dominant sweep. Uh, 44 goals were scored, and then they only let in 22 goals against, which, mind you, three of those were against the Panthers. Three. Three of those 22 goals were against the Panthers. All of those other goals against the Leafs. They only let in three goals against the Panthers, which I think is simply unreal. A dominant performance by the Lightning. Obviously, they play this style that is just unbelievable. And Florida plays this risky, undisciplined type of hockey that really kind of affected them against the Lightning. And I mean, Vasilevsky alone dominated, especially in Game 4. And he still showed that he is one of, if not the best goalie in the league so far still. As for the Rangers, they played the most amount of games possible to make it to the third round. They beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in seven games. They were down three to one, came back, beat the Carolina Hurricanes in seven games as well. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know about the Rangers. They scored 48 goals. They only let in 42. You can look at this and say, well, they won out of the Metropolitan Division. I did, not, I did not have them winning. I didn't even have them beating Pittsburgh, if I'm correct. Um, they beat the Metropolitan teams, they won on the Metropolitan, and they have a chance to win out of the Eastern Conference. I'm going to be entirely honest with you, I didn't expect them to be here. I didn't expect them to be here at all, and some of it plays a role through luck. Both teams, the Hurricanes and the Penguins, had injury problems. Obviously, uh, Pittsburgh had significant goalie issues, and Carolina obviously got Ronta injured in Game 7, and then they had Anderson out the entire playoffs. So, it really is a wonder that the Rangers are still here. I think a lot of people are still doubting them. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. They have a lot of good players who have really contributed for them. But are they really supposed to be here? I'm not trying to discreet or degrade anything that they have done. But then again, when you look at Tampa, I mean, they've played like legitimate teams. I don't know about the Rangers. They play teams that have gone through a lot of injuries. And I think this series may be different when it comes to that. This is obviously a rematch from 2015 when the Rangers had Henrik Lundqvist in their prime. And then they had... Ben Bishop for the Lightning, if I'm correct. It was a way different time for both teams, but now these two teams are completely different, two completely different goaltenders, and I think it's going to be a very entertaining series if you're into the goalies especially. We'll take a look at the leading playoff scores for the Tampa Bay Lightning. You'll start off with Nikita Kucherov there, four goals, 11 assists for 15 points. Obviously, he's been significant. He's been significant through all the Lightning playoff runs. Then you have Victor Hedman there as well. Two goals, eight assists, 10 points. Still proving that he is one of the top defensemen in the league. And then you have Ross Colton, a player who obviously scored the game winner in last year's Cup Finals against the Montreal Canadiens. This year, he's looked really good in the playoffs. Five goals, three assists for eight points. And then you, of course, have Andre Vasilevsky there beating Andre Vasilevsky. 8-3-0, a 2.22 goals against average and a .93 to save percentage. Big shout-outs excuse me, to Nick Paul and Brandon Hagel. They both played very significant roles uh, in this team. And believe it or not, Braden Point was out that entire series against Florida, and they swept them. Their top five player, their top five center, obviously one of the top five centers in the league, if you want to argue it, he was out the entire series, and Tampa still won it. Now, Point is likely going to return in the conference finals. Point's played for some significant injuries. Uh, in past playoffs, so obviously this one is pretty significant to where he has to be out, but it's looking like he's going to come back, and it's just been an unbelievable run, once again, for the Lightning. When you look at the Rangers there, you have Mika Zibanejad starting off there. Obviously, he's had his struggles, struggling to score, but he's really come out on top still. Seven goals, 12 assists for 19 points. Then you have Adam Fox proving he's one of the best defenders in the league, like Victor Hedman. Five goals, 13 assists for 18 points. Then you have deadline acquisition Andrew Cobb. And this kind of surprised me. He's been a little bit quiet, if we're being honest. I didn't expect him to have this many points, but he has six goals, six assists for 12 points. And then, of course, you have Igor Shosturkin, who is arguably the Conn Smythe winner 
right now for the Rangers if they were to win it. 8-5-0, a 2.68 goals against average, and a .928 save percentage. Shout out to Philip Heedle as well. Heedle has played a gigantic role on what the Rangers have done, especially in that second round. Uh, he's really impressed me. He's become one of my favorite players on the Rangers uh, coming through this cup run. I've really enjoyed watching him play, especially in the live streams against Pittsburgh and then obviously against Carolina as well. It was very, very entertaining. Now it's time for the final verdict here. Who takes this series? And I'm going to be honest with y'all, I doubted the Rangers last time. I'm going to doubt them again. Tampa in six. I'm going to say that right now. Tampa in six. I'm going to say Tampa holds off the Rangers offense. Now, if you are the Rangers, though, if you want to beat Tampa, as a defending Stanley Cup champions team that has won two cups in a row, what do you want to do? What do you want to do exactly? Well, you want to lock on to the defense. You want to lock on to the defense, obviously. You want to have Ryan Lindgren, Adam Fox, Justin Braun, all those guys holding up the back end, given that Lindgren doesn't get injured. It looks like he's fine, but... I don't know. And then obviously Shesterkin there, obviously you need to help him behind in net. Uh, although he is a very, very good goalie, you may not be able to hold off some of Tampa's offense. And the funny thing is when you notice it, it's really Russian. It's a Russian powered series because you have Kucherov, you have Vasilevsky, you have Shesterkin, you have Zibanejad, although I think Zibanejad's Swedish. I might be, I'm stupid. I don't know. I don't pay attention to that stuff, but it's a very significant series when it comes to uh, the Russians. But I'm going to be honest, I think the Tampa Bay Lightning win this one in six. They play this style where, to be honest with you, no matter what team they play, whether it's the Oilers or the Avalanche, I think they'll win the Cup. I think they will win the. Thir I think they will win their third straight. Um, no disrespect to what the Rangers have done. They've impressed me. I did not think they'd get this far at all. But here they are in the conference finals, and I'm still talking about them. But, and, and, I mean, they said it right. Some I forget who it was on the Rangers, but they said they were like cockroaches. And, like, they just keep coming and coming and coming and coming. And they're still here. And all these other teams aren't. And I think it's just surreal to see the Rangers go on this run that nobody really expected. Unless if you're a Rangers fan. Now, anyways, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thank you all very much for watching. For us, personally, I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe if you're new. I would greatly appreciate it. We're really grinding out the content. I'm not going live tonight, unfortunately, for Avalanche versus Oilers, but I will be going live for the rest of the week, including Game 1, Game 2, Game game 2, Game 3, for all the conferences, everything. I'm going live for the entire Eastern Conference and the Western Conference besides Game 1. So, anyways, thank you all very much for watching. For us, personally, I really do appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.